A happy dark early morning to you. It is actually 6.05 in the morning, but as you can see, it appears to be pitch black. I uh, left a little bit early from work today because it's a holiday. There's not much to do after the show, so time to go home and leave CBS Sports Radio Network. I am your host of the Dave Talk Sports Podcast. I am Dave Ettinger. This is episode, I don't know, I lose track every single week. I don't know, call it 48, call it 49. It's uh, We're approaching 50 episodes here. Having a good time with the podcast. Hope you guys are enjoying it as well, where I get all my... Uh, mostly unfiltered uh, opinions and sports takes that I have out into the universe. And I hope that you enjoy them. Sometimes I'm brutally honest. I'm always brutally honest. Sometimes it's brutal. Sometimes it's kind of nice. And today we're going to recap and break down a couple different trades in the NFL because it's been a wild couple days around the NFL. So a couple days ago you had... Final cut down day where every single NFL team has to cut their rosters to the seemingly final 53 man roster. Now, some surprise moves, some moves that you know we saw coming, some that just make sense, some are financial, you know, strictly financial, and then you see some trades happen where lots of players get shifted around that maybe you didn't see coming now tanking exists in in every sport i don't care what the coaches say like new head coach of the miami dolphins brian flores i'm sorry that you're inheriting a team that's tanking but you are so you can lie to the general public and say that you have too much respect for the game to be involved in tanking well i hate to break it to you pal you're involved in a full-blown tank. When you have a left tackle who is an elite-level left tackle, like Laramie Tunsil, you don't trade them. Okay? It's just like the Raiders trading a guy who can get after the quarterback at an elite level like Khalil Mack last year. You do not trade guys like that when they're still in their early to mid-20s. That, that, that move doesn't exist unless you're in full-on tank mode. And that's what the Raiders were last year in recouping multiple first-round picks for Khalil Mack. And it's the same exact thing that just happened with the Dolphins shipping Laramie Tunsil and Kenny Stills out of town to the Houston Texans for two first round picks and a second round pick and two players. Now it's a big haul and you hope for the Texans sake now that they finally got an elite left tackle to protect Sean Watson's blind side and hopefully keep him healthy. You hope they have an agreement made in principle with Laramie Tunsil. Tunsil you'll probably remember as the left tackle who slid uh, you know about 10 picks down the draft when he was drafted because there was a video that surfaced of him smoking weed inside of this weird gas mask type thing. It was a really weird video, but I hate to break it to you, all the teams who passed on Tunsil, a lot of people smoke weed. That doesn't make it okay. That doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it less illegal in certain states. But that's not a reason why in the NFL you should have let him slide like 10 draft picks. Because this guy was NFL ready and you should have drafted him in the top five opposed to letting him slide to, I believe he was the 13th pick, correct me if I'm wrong, to the Dolphins. And now the Dolphins are shipping him out of town. Not because he's a head case, not because he has gotten in trouble with the law as some thought he would have after a video like that but because the Dolphins are in full-on tank mode. Now, winners, losers of the deal, I mean, when you're tanking and you get two first-round picks and a second-round pick and a couple other players, it's hard to say that you lost the deal. So I guess that they kind of won, only it's really stupid to trade an elite-level left tackle because outside of the quarterback, the left tackle 
is the most important position on the field, bar none. Yes, getting after the, the, the quarterback with a pass rusher is really important, albeit a defensive end or a defensive tackle. But y- y- there's no argument. Outside of the quarterback, it's the guy who protects the quarterback that is most vital. So there are no lefty quarterbacks who start in the NFL. Therefore, the right tackle is not as important. It's the left tackle that is the second most important position on the entire football field. Now, uh, the absolute loser in this trade is whenever he eventually starts for the Dolphins is Josh Rosen. Has anyone gotten more of a raw deal in the beginning of their career or at any point in their career than Josh Rosen? This guy has been set up to fail from day bleepity bleepin' one. This guy gets drafted to the Cardinals, who then wait until they are an absolute disaster, just an absolute disaster area to put him behind the worst offensive line in the history of the world. And now they trade him after one, yes, albeit atrocious year, they trade him to the Dolphins, who are now also terrible, and trade a left tackle who's going to protect his blind side when he gets on the field. I mean, and they have no weapons. I mean, their number one receiver is who? Devontae Parker, an absolute bust? I mean, Albert Wilson? I mean, the Dolphins receiving core is a joke. It's an absolute joke, so I feel bad for him. Now, as for the Texans, again, it's an absolute win if they've already agreed in principle to a deal with Tunsil to stay there for multiple years, but they, they win no matter what because they're getting somebody to protect Deshaun Watson, and that is the most important thing that you can do for a young quarterback is give him a left tackle. Now, for the other move, also involving the Texans, Javion and Clowney getting sent to Seattle. Great for Seattle, but again, can you get Jadavian Clowney to sign long-term to stay there, or is he just a rental? Now, the good thing for Seattle is they gave up absolutely nothing. They gave up absolutely nothing for, for the talent of Jadavian Clowney. Now, long story with Clowney. We don't have time today, but the Texans didn't want to sign him long-term. His franchise tender amount was was off due to the difference in, in price for a linebacker versus uh, a defensive end. So it's just a whole big disaster to begin with, and he clearly didn't want to stay there. And they didn't have to ship him out of town, but if he's not going to resign, then I, I, I guess you have to get something rather than nothing. But they get nothing. They get a third-round pick and two linebackers, one of which was going to be cut anyway. So they get absolutely nothing for Clowney, so I I don't get that. So it's an interesting revolving door in the NFL. LaShawn McCoy gets cut by the Bills, picked up by the Chiefs. Carlos Carlos Hyde gets shipped from the Chiefs to, uh, he's all over the place. I mean, he, you know, he's not with the Jaguars anymore. He's not with the Browns anymore. He ends up with uh, the Texans as well. So they had him to go along with Duke Johnson. It's just a revolving door of players in the NFL with final cut down day, trades happening galore, and the season starts in just three days. I, for one, cannot wait. And NFL is awesome. So, with that being said, this is the Dave Talk Sports YouTube channel. I am Dave Ettinger, the host of the Dave Talk Sports podcast. This has been episode number approximately 48 or 49. Who knows? We'll figure it out when we get there. And I hope you've enjoyed. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel below the video. Please leave as many comments about these trades, who won, who lost, as you can. And on that note, enjoy your Labor Day. See you. Enjoy not working. I missed the button.